Just understand when I tell you people that that's the power. Oh, don't you know, don't you know, don't you know that that's the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, started doing music um, shortly after I got cut from a Canadian football team. Um, uh, fresh out of college, I, I believe that uh, football was the path that I was supposed to be on, but uh, my true senior year dislocated my knee and uh, the opportunity to play in the NFL kind of dried up and uh, I was damaged goods, but I did get an opportunity to try out with uh, the Hamilton Tiger Cats in Canada. Um, wasn't able to make the team and uh, moved to Iowa City uh, with the mindset of work a little bit and get into graduate school. And I put out seven resumes when I first got here to different businesses. I got offered a combination of five different jobs. And so as opposed to going to school and getting a master's degree, I just started working all five jobs and uh, just staggered schedules and uh, just worked. And at one of my jobs, my boss heard me singing in the office one day and <laughs> tried to convince me that I needed to come audition to, for her son's blues band. There's a band that was just getting started called the Blues Instigators. And uh, I, it wasn't in my, in my head that I was gonna sing uh, ever. It wasn't something I was trying to do. And so she kind of tricked me into coming over to their house one evening uh, when the band was having a, having a rehearsal and uh, sneaking up on 30 years later, here I am. Blues is one of those things for me that's remarkably geographic. I mean, you've got, you know, if you listen to blues musicians from Mississippi, there's a style there, the Delta, the, you know, the, the you know, from the uh, Carolinas, you've got Piedmont blues. From Texas, you've got that thing going on. You've got Memphis, you've got Chicago, you've got all these places that define how blues is played geographically, but we've never defined Iowa. And so, yeah, I would call what I do um, an Iowa blues. The cool thing about Iowa is we've got 360 degrees of influence. You know, it's not just one direction, it's from everywhere. And so the influence of it is a very broad brush. Um, it's a blank canvas, if you will. And, um, you know, but the one thing that has to be true to it, in my opinion, is we have to remember that it's a folk music. There's no written form of how to do this. It's, you know, no different than bluegrass. You know, there's not charts for bluegrass music and, and you know not not from the original form it was just what your grandfather's grandfather taught your grandfather to teach your father to teach to you you know kind of thing for you to teach to your your children and so it's one of those things as a folk art that we lose track of the fact that it is an african-american folk art it is a, it's, it's black folks folk music and uh and it's accessible to a lot of folks and to a lot of different people from a standpoint of that emotional connection. Um, but it's definitely folk music. And we was gonna stop. Oh, it's humbling because I, I know the people that um, the people that I admire um, that are artists here, you know, the folks that, that played music for years and years, for decades before me. Uh, I'm a fan of the history of, and I know all of those people, and I know of them anyway, and uh, um, it is humbling for my, that, to find out that my name is being mentioned, you know, as they take the deep breath to give that list of, in the Hall of Fame, my, my name's in that, that list that they're breathing, you know. Um, from a standpoint of, of, you know, being given, you know, the accolades from the city, it's one of those things where you hope that people respect you for what it is that you do and what you bring to a community. And I think that those things have come about because I've, I've fostered, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've built 
a, a solid reputation with, within my community as far as someone who cares about how my community is doing. You know, when, when people call my name and they ask me to come and assist with benefits or if somebody needs some help in their yard and I get a phone call, you know, I, I don't care who it is, if you need help, I'm here to help you. And uh, uh, I think that's what being a neighbor is. I think that's what being a part of a community is supposed to be, is that we, we see when somebody's not being, not, not on their best, on their, not having their best day and you're just able to, to be somebody that at least tries to shift it or doesn't add to it, you know? And so, you know, I, I think over time I've, I've built that as a reputation. And so it's, it's, like I said, it's just, it's humbling. You know, one of the things that uh, as a community that's happened is that we've lost the opportunity to come together safely. And uh, I think the good folks here at Wilson's have created a nice, safe environment for folks to be able to come, be in a family setting and enjoy um, what it is to, what it is we can enjoy, you know, getting together, having some fun, listening to some music, um, enjoying a good meal, and, and just relaxing. There's too much ugly in the world to, to not take the opportunity to enjoy a lovely day. <laughs> so thanks, thanks to you guys for, for creating a space where folks can have a lovely day. And I know, I know, I know, I know it's gonna be a lovely day.